First of all, uh, the, the EU and members in the EU have been torch bearers mm. in terms of the long effort to send a very clear message of a search for peace and justice and reform uh, in um, Burma, in Myanmar. And so we've, we have had re, you know, remarkable cooperation over decades with key countries and aspects of the EU. And that's reflected in a number of institutions, including the so-called Friends of Burma, that meet regularly either in Europe or in uh, uh, New York under the auspices of the United Nations. We are uh, trying very clearly to send a message that we appreciate, we recognize um, uh, uh, the steps that have been taken. We want uh, uh, still more to, uh, 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 to follow. We want to encourage this process. And we think working with the uh, Europeans on this phased, careful, but still forward-looking engagement is probably the most important thing that we can do uh, on the ground inside of uh, Burma today. I think um, uh, my colleague and good friend, uh, Ambassador Derek Mitchell, who's responsible for Burma, has already had uh, a couple of visits to Europe to ensure that we're closely cooperated on the way, on the way forward. And again, our interaction has been very detailed. And I think we all share uh, a similar goal and set of aspirations with respect to what's transpiring inside the country. I think first and foremost, there is a recognition that this is the most hopeful reform that we have seen in decades, and that it offers the, uh, the prospect and possibility of a very different society. Uh, we have also seen a number of steps with regard to the release of Aung San Suu Kyi, her uh, you know, upcoming participation in the political process, <coughs> uh, dialogues underway with many of the ethnic groups, uh, release of a very substantial number of political prisoners, and a whole host of other activities that are um, important um, and uh, very much to be welcomed.